Hey everybody, Jay here. Welcome back to the channel. We're down here at the workbench. Today we're going to cover three winter chainsaw tips. Now, if you cut firewood in the wintertime or if you work for a tree service or whatever it may be, um, this video should help you. Uh, if you, I've made these three mistakes my first year really getting into firewood, so I want to share this quick video with you uh, so you don't make the same mistakes. So, if you cut firewood in the wintertime, this video is for you, so stick around. It should be fun. Alright, so these are my saws. This is my Echo CS490, uh, 49cc saw, and then this is my big girl, my 257 20-year-old Husqvarna that we got running a few videos back. But anyways, <clears throat> excuse me. These are going to be the two saws. I cut firewood all year long. Um, the cool thing about my property is in the wintertime, it's easier to get to certain areas than it is in the summertime because the ground's a little bit more harder. So, uh, more harder. The ground is harder, excuse me. So anyways, I cut wood year round, so I'm gonna cover three tips um, to make your chainsaw run the best in the wintertime. So let's go ahead and start with the echo here. So first tip for winter chainsaw cutting. I made this mistake my first year. I'm not gonna try to act like I know it all. I'm gonna be 100% honest with you. I made this mistake my first year and what a pain in the ass it was. Anyways, under your air filter cover, if you remove your air filter, See this right here? This little flap, this little piece of plastic. You pull this up. I don't know how well. Hold on, let me let's pause for a second. I clean this up. All right, so we're back. So hopefully you can see this, but see how that says summer close? And then hopefully you can read that winter open. Now, if you look inside here, there's the fins of the cylinder head. So for winter open, what this is going to do is this is going to direct warm air from the cylinder head into your air box, I guess chamber if you want to call it for lack of better terms. And what that's going to do is, is that's going to allow your saw to run off of warmer air than the ambient, let's say it's five degrees out. It's going to be sucking in warmer air from the hot air off the engine versus the five degree air from the outside. So it's going to run a little bit better. My first year I bought this saw, I went right into winter time. It was on summer mode. So any saw you buy, it's probably going to be on summer mode most likely because it's going to, there's probably more warmer months and colder months depending on where the units are sold. But I didn't even notice that was a thing. I'll admit it. I didn't know. Um, so anyways, this is tip number one is make sure that your intake flap, or if your saw has this option, that you're on uh, wintertime mode. Now crossing borders here, I'm gonna show you the same thing on this Husky. So this is a 257 Husky. Um, this saw was built in 96, so it's 20 something years old. Uh, I don't do math on camera, but anyways, I took the bolt chain, bar and chains off so I can demonstrate uh, for you in this video, but, we pull this cover off, so we have an air filter here, but underneath this cover, hold on, let me move the power head. Underneath this cover here, you see how we have this? This is gonna be um, a stopper. Let me, let me, uh, gonna pop the air cleaner off for a second. So if you look here, I pulled this off of um, the inside of the cover here, but what this is gonna be, this is gonna be a plug. See how I just put that in right there? Let me demonstrate that again. So this plug here, uh, I believe it goes this way. I've never actually done it. But anyways, this plug, this is an air injection saw. So this is going to pull air from the side cover here and inject it into there. But you don't want to be pulling that cold air uh, from the outside. So what this is going to do is, is once we pull our cover back on, it's going to pull heat. It's going to still suck in air, but it's going to suck in air off of the cylinder head here. And it's going to be warmer air. So that's, again, the wintertime mode for the Husky. I just showed you wintertime mode for the Echo. So... I don't know if all saws are like this, but there's a 23 year span between these two saws and they both have the same technology. So I find that uh, I find that pretty neat. So let's go ahead and throw this back on and we'll get to the next trick. All right, the next thing we're gonna cover is bar oil. So tip number two is winter bar oil. Now they do manufacture 
um, winter style bar oil. It's going to be a little bit thinner than the summertime stuff. But what I do is I take a clear jug like this. Um, I start with bar oil. I put some bar oil in here and then I add some, just some automatic transmission fluid. Some guys can use some canola oil. It just depends on what you're doing, um, what you're into. But basically, I don't know the actual ratio, but you want to thin out your bar oil. And what, what that's going to do for you is that it's going to pump a lot easier through the chainsaw and lubricate your bar and chain over the wintertime. You do not want to smoke your bar and chain. Bar and chains run anywhere probably from 60 bucks to 100 bucks, depending on the length. So this little, this is my second part of this video is um, thin out your bar oil with some transmission fluid. Again, disclaimer, disclaimer. Um, read your owner's manual for wintertime operation. And this is what I do in my two saws. They're still running fine. I'm still running the same bar on my Echo from four years ago. So evidently it's worked. But anyways, consult your owner's manual. Do your own research. But this is what I do. Thin your bar oil out with some transmission fluid. All right, third and final thing that applies to all chainsaws is your bar and chain. Um, remember that your chainsaw, your bar is a friction point that's why you obviously you have your oiler but your chain and your bar is going to heat up when you run it but the thing you want to avoid is um in the winter time your chainsaw chain is going to contract so after you're done you need to loosen your chain a few turns because what happens is if your chain tightens up it's going to put stress on this crank um, there's bearings in here. Your connecting rod or your engine, I know I'm getting too internal, but your connecting rod or your engine that moves up and down and spins this, if you put tension on this, you're going to wear out the bearing behind this clutch here. So you want to be sure that after you do your firewood cutting in the wintertime, you're going to, your bar is going to get hot, your chain's going to get warm, you're going to adjust it to the right tension outside, but the minute you, uh, the minute you shut that chain off, that baby's going to tighten back up. So again, those are just three things that you need to pay attention, uh, attention to if you're going to run your saw in the wintertime. Uh, I made that mistake my first year. I ran my Echo, adjusted my chain, I threw it in the shed. I came out the next day, started it up, didn't even check the tension, and I was running it super, super tight. I probably did some damage to the bar prematurely. But anyways, that was a couple years ago. I've learned since, but I wanted to share this quick video to make sure that nobody makes a mistake. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's just a quick three, um, three tip video on winter chainsaw cutting. Um, I made these three mistakes my first year. I didn't uh, switch over my air filter. I couldn't get that thing started for the life of me. I had to leave it in the basement, start it. And run out the bulkhead because it would only start in the ambient temperature and i had to leave it running i couldn't figure out what the issue was um the second thing is um bar oil i ran the same bar oil all year long and it was barely pumping out in the winter time and i probably did a lot of premature bar damage that i needed to and then the third thing is the tension again i made that mistake i went out i cut a whole day like that with the chain too tight so you could just got to be careful so anyways i'm jay appreciate you guys watching and uh, we'll see you on the next one so I really appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for supporting the channel. Um, I hope this video helped you. If you knew all this stuff, great. Uh, let me know uh, any other tips. If I missed anything, let me know what you do for uh, bar oil as far as. I've heard of stuff people thin it out with diesel. I don't know. I've heard some crazy stuff. But anyways, I hope you guys liked the video. Please hit that thumbs up. Please hit the subscribe button if you're not uh, following along in the homestead. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.